Yo, what is up guys and welcome to another Wild Rift video. In today's video, I'll show you guys how to dominate the game with Braum on support. Braum is an incredibly powerful support and a common misconception about this champion is that all he can do is just keep up his shield and, you know, use his ultimate and that's it, right? Like that's the common misconception. Braum is just the champion with the big shield, right? It's not the case, right? It's, it's not the case. He has much, much more to his kit and especially that stupid passive of his, which is so incredibly strong. This, the, the, the insane stunning that he has i'll show you during the video how to utilize this passive and how to destroy the enemy with it so in the beginning part of the video i'm gonna i'm gonna explain to you guys how to build brom there's timestamps in the description to skip to the gameplay um so with brom I, I tried not going for boots first item, but you know what it is? Going redemption first just felt way too strong. So first of all, getting boots first allows you to roam around faster. And um, this is already a really good thing with Brom. I love roaming around, especially to the mid lane, right? Like I really love roaming to the mid lane. And this really allows you to do that, right? Like getting the boots makes you so much faster. Very likely you're going to need the plated steel caps. Uh, Mercury threats is good. The reason that you sometimes need Mercury threats is because if you're up against a very high CC composition, uh, if you are stunned, taunted, or rooted, or anything, or sorry, not rooted, but if you're stunned, anything like that, you cannot put up your shield. It doesn't work. You can only put up your shield if you're not CC'd. That is why if you're up against like a Twisted Fate and then Morgana, etc., it's actually good to go for the Mercury Threats, just so you don't get one shot, because Brahm is actually not that tanky without his shield. So, only in that case you get the Mercury threat. Otherwise, you just get the Plated Steel Caps. Plated Steel Caps is gonna make you insanely tanky against attack damage champions. So for your enchantments, I like I always go for redemption. And actually, like there's two reasons for that. The first one is your first ability slows the enemy, and then um your passive stuns the enemy. So basically, it's a free hit on redemption. Like when a Braum fights, he likes to keep the fight in the same spot. And the second reason why is his ultimate, right? Like as I said, when Braum fights the enemy, very likely the fight is gonna stay in the same spot because you're slowing the enemy with your first ability, you're stunning them with your passive, and you're knocking them up and slowing all of the enemies with your ultimate so very generally the fight is going to stay in one spot which makes the redemption insanely powerful because it heals your team with uh, uh it heals your allies and it damages the enemy by 10 percent of their maximum health through them so it's a huge huge one for Braum. so first item is already situational like what do you need right okay so let me explain um, if you just want to be like a tank that wastes time for your team and the enemy has like a Yasuo and a Lucian, especially the Yasuo or a Rangar in the jungle who's going for crit, you start with a Randuin's Omen. This is an insanely powerful item on Braum. It allows you to waste a ton of a ton of time. So if the enemy has a lot of crit champions, you know, also a Trindamir or something, you can get a Randuin's Omen first. If you want to play Braum the more conventional way, the nor like the, the normal way, you go for the Deadman's Plate. Even though Deadman's Plate got nerfed, um, it grants you up to 40 movement speed at 100 stacks, which allows you to roam around a lot. That's the point, right? Like, that's the point of Braum. It allows you to roam around a lot, which is really, really nice to do, because this allows you to gank lanes more or more effectively. And also, like, your next basic attack, you know, you use your first ability on an enemy and then a basic attack. That one basic attack does 100 bonus magic damage, which may not sound like a lot, but it definitely is. It contributes a lot to the burst damage. Then we have the Zeke's Convergence. This one really depends on how good your ADC is. If you have a good ADC, you get the Zeke's Convergence as your second item. You can even get it as your first item, although I don't really recommend it, but you can. If you really trust the ADC, you can get a Zeke's Convergence. Um, there's also a Warmock. Now, this one is very good if you just do skirmishes. Like, if you constantly do skirmishes... Ah, thank you, I'll let me if you constantly do skirmishes, right? Like, if you're constantly fighting uh, uh, in a 2 versus 2, 3 versus 3, etc., a new iPad came in, by the way. I uh, bought it for my mother. Um, 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 what was I talking about? Yeah, that, then you get the, the Warmock. The Warmock. Because it constantly allows you to heal up right after it. Don't get a Warmock if you're up, if you're, like, if you're constantly doing full 5 versus 5s, because then the item is literally useless. Now, the Protector's Vow is good if you're up against, like, a, like a Katarina, like a Rengar. If you're up against a backline diving enemy or an Evelyn. Because what this allows you to do, if you stay close to your ally in the backline, it gives them this shield and this shield is big this is a really good shield and it gives movement speed so when your ally gets dived upon protector's vow protects them it's really really nice the extra shield is very powerful abyssal mask is also good if your team has a lot of magic damage abyssal mask is gonna be nice um 
And you know, whatever you need, like whatever you need, you can go for. I've explained the majority of items that you can go for. Uh, yeah, yeah, I definitely have. So the, go for these items and it will pretty much always be good. For the runes, you go for Font of Life, always. Um, not Aftershock. I, I've seen some Aftershock Browns, but it's just not worth it. Brown give, gives so much healing with Font of Life, it's just totally worth it. And you can constantly proc it with your first ability. Second rune, you go for Weakness. Um, Brown's first ability applies Weakness. Brown's basic attacks apply, or sorry, Brown's passive applies Weakness. And Brown's ultimate applies Weakness. And you don't even have to hit your ultimate on an enemy to apply Weakness. Because if the enemies walk through the slowing uh, uh, area of the ultimate, it also applies the Weakness. Third rune is Situational, but I really love Conditioning. After 3 minutes, you get the bonus Armor and Magic Resist. You can go for Hunter Titan 2, of course, if the enemy has CC, but yeah, I, I really love conditioning. And mo most of my games I go for conditioning. Fourth rune, there's two, two runes that you can go for. Pack Hunter if you just want to fight. And then you also have Pathfinder. If you really want to roam a lot, like if you really, really want to roam a lot, you can get the Pathfinder. Uh, for your, for your, for your spells, you go for Flash and Heal. You can get an Exhaust if your ally doesn't get an Exhaust. But yeah, besides, just go for a Heal. So that is it for the build part. Let's now get into the gameplay. <clears throat> All right, on to the gameplay, guys. And who? This was when I was, uh, I believe, like Grandmaster with 350 LP, something like that. Like the games that I have for you, the games that I have coming for you guys in the next couple days are amazing. Trust me. And as I said, you support mains are gonna love them. But I like, I just wanna, you know, I know the impact that my channel can have on the Wild Rift community, right? Like because there's quite a lot of viewers. I just kind of want to convince the majority of the viewers, like, okay, you need to respect the support role a little more because I'm gonna be real honest with you guys. I personally also, you know, kind of thought like, okay, support, whatever, it's nice, but whatever, right? Like, I, I gotta be real honest with you guys, I thought the same. But it's really not the case. Like, really, 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 that's not the case. And support is like, honestly, like, in, in a lot of games, I, I was even doing way more than my allies. And I was doing a lot of damage, and then, of course, the insane tanking that a support does. So in this game, what I did right here, I really abused the power that Braum has. And the power that Braum has is level 1 skirmishes. At level 1, uh, I would say Braum is the strongest champion in the game. It's, that's, uh, it's, uh, you know, that's a pretty hard thing to say because obviously there's like 70 champions. But Braum, I mean, Braum is definitely a top 5 strongest champion in the early game. And the whole reason is... His passive and his first ability. His first ability deals a lot of damage. And his passive stuns the enemy for 1.5 seconds. So at level 1, you already have both these things. That's what makes him super powerful. By the way, guys, I'm doing a skin giveaway. Giving away uh, 8 skins, 8 legendary skins. All you have to do is put a comment under the video to enter for this month. Um, yeah. So... Obviously, Braum with the big shield, right? Like, that, you do have to understand that the shield is a big part. So here you can see, I'm actually engaging with the shield, as you can see, right? I'm engaging with the shield, although it was not the best shield, but I, the, there is the idea. So I actually screwed it up right there. I used the shield, but my Lucian was not ready to follow up. Now, I don't really know if it was my fault or the Lucian's fault, because I was quite clear that I was going in. But yeah, if you if you... Oh, that was a nice hit. Jinx should be dead here. I hit the Jinx, so she should be dead. Look at that stun. That stun is just insane how long it takes. And boom, boom, there it is. She should be dead too. Stunned for 1.5 seconds. Oh, no way. No, she's not gonna live. There's absolutely no way that we're gonna let her live. There it is. Good job, Lucian. Nice. But can you see how powerful that stun is? And you can proc the stun on multiple enemies. So you don't have to like stun one enemy and then go to the next one. You can proc it on multiple enemies. So you can basic attack enemy one. Then you can use your first ability on another enemy. And then you can basic attack another enemy. And all of them will get stunned if your allies follow up. So during a team fight, especially, try to hit as many enemies as you can with Braum because then you're going to be stunning all of them. It's insane. Um, so I was talking about the shield, the third ability. I did screw it up right there, but yeah, let's actually take a look at a different example when I use it, because we just didn't coordinate it well there, right? Like, I went in, and then afterwards, my Lucian went in. So, it's, like, basically, there is a few purposes to the third ability. The first one is wasting time, and what I mean with wasting time is, like, you go in, you use your third ability, oh, 
this is what I mean with ganking, by the way. You go in, you use a third ability, and the enemies try to hit your ally, but they cannot get through you. Because the shield of Brum, the way that it works, is it puts a shield in front of whatever comes comes on it. Except for lasers, because lasers go right through it. But besides that, like if Jinx tries to basic attack my Lucian, if I'm standing in front of him with the shield, it doesn't go to him. It goes to me. And I take a lot of reduced damage for that. So I can waste a lot of time with that. Here I'm using my shield again to waste time. I got caught. But the thing with Brahm is, the beauty of Brahm is, if you get caught, you just use your shield. Uh, you just use the third ability. I'm using the redemption here to heal up, to waste time. And look, he got exhausted by my Lucian. I do have my ultimate, but I don't feel like it's necessary to use because he's incredibly low. I feel that it's a bit more worthy to use it uh, uh, in a team fight. So I didn't use my ultimate there because I knew like, okay, Kha'Zix is going to die anyways. And you could see how good the redemption was there, right, by the way. It dealt a lot of damage to Kha'Zix. It healed me and the Lucian up. So you can see it, it clearly provides a lot of value in, in, with Braum. Because you can keep the enemy at one spot very easily. Yeah, we're getting the Mountain Dragon, which is of course nice. And I'm going for the Deadman's Plate this game. So, very likely I'm going to be roaming around a lot. You know, when I go for the Deadman's Plate, um, I, I, I only go for this item if I actually make use of it. Never just go for the Deadman's Plate, guys. It's not that good of an item anymore. They nerfed it, of course. You really have to buy an item with a purpose. And especially a Deadman's Plate. Because, you know, I, I, I'm coaching people with my Patreon. And I see people, and even in my ranked in Challenger games, I just see so many people taking, just building whatever the top one Braum is building, right, for example. Or building whatever the top one Vagar is building. I'm just giving examples random, randomly. But then playing it's so weird, like they would build a dead man's plate and then not do anything with it. Like they, they would just stay in the lane or a Vagar would build like a like a rod of ages and then constantly gank lanes. Like, bro, why did you not get a Ludens Echo if you want to gank lanes, right? So they just follow builds, but they don't understand the purpose of the builds. And this, this is such a big thing in Wild Rift. And I'm going to be making a full item guide again. And that video is probably going to going to be like two and a half hours long. I'm going to make it soon. I'm just working on it because I want to make that one very, very good. So I'm working on it. Don't worry, it's going to come. So here, yet again, I'm roaming around. And with the bonus movement speed that that item gives me, I don't know what it's called, winged something. I can just roam around and very easily help my team, as you can see. I have my ultimate. This time, of course, I am using it, as you can see, just to be able to kill the Gragas as well. Unfortunately, like, the reason that I killed him there is because if I didn't, he could have actually killed my Graves. So even though I don't want to secure kills as a Braum support, I did it there because, um, yeah, my Graves was really struggling to kill him. He was really struggling. He was reloading, reloading his bullets. So I just made sure to secure that kill with my first ability. Oh, another thing, by the way, Braum is actually pretty strong at one versus ones too. Believe it or not, Braum is a very strong one versus one champion. Not necessarily against a champion like Renekton, but if you're up against a Jinx or something, you know, if you're up against that enemy ADC that cannot shred tanks, you can actually win one versus ones. He's obviously not as strong as Alistar is in one versus ones, but still substantially strong, like strong enough to take fights, really. Definitely strong enough to take fights. So now I can get a Deadman's Plate, especially with the Deadman's Plate, by the way, it gives you a lot of bonus damage. Here I'm just kind of solo pushing a turret. Kha'Zix cannot do anything against me, by the way, like, he cannot do anything. Look at this, I'm just blocking all of the damage, wasting their time, using the Redemption, and look at, just look at how much damage only I did to them. Kha'Zix is at like half HP, and this was a 1 versus 3 situation. This is all because of my third ability, which wastes a lot of time, and then my Redemption, which I can put down and hit all of the enemies with with here constantly just constantly applying my passive on the enemy now my lucian is just winning one versus ones very easily against the jinx why because i'm forcing the lulu to roam around because i am roaming around i'm basically forcing the lulu because if she doesn't roam we will just destroy them in the mid lane and brom will always win these fights oh ultimate boom look at that the enemies actually had a beautiful engage oof the enemies actually had a beautiful engage with that Gragas ultimate. As you saw, we actually did very good, but unfortunately, we didn't necessarily win the fight. And honestly, that was really because their, their Gragas just had a beautiful ultimate. That was really beautiful. What can I say? Like, of course, you know, if they have such a beautiful ultimate, they will win the fight and they deserve to win that fight then. Uh, what item was I getting, actually? Was I going for the Protectors Vow this game or a Warmock? These are two items that I would... Like, I was also obviously testing builds because that's what I always do. I think I actually went for a Warmock second in this game. And I did like it a lot. 
Uh, the reason that I went for a Warmog second is because in this game, there's a lot of skirmishes. Like, as you can see, I was constantly chilling in the mid lane. So I was constantly like, you know, doing a two versus two or three versus three. So Warmog allows me to heal up all the time and just constantly dash out damage on the enemy. So that's why I was going for the Warmog this game. Unfortunately, I don't have an ultimate in this fight, which kind of sucks, but it's fine. It's not like if you don't have an ultimate... You cannot... Do oh, I blocked the complete engage of the Gragas right there. Did you see that? I just completely denied his engage. I blocked his first ability and I blocked out his ultimate. You saw? If I hadn't done that, they would have actually probably won this team fight. Because Gra full AP Gragas would have dealt so much damage with his ultimate and split up all of us. And then the Kha'Zix would have engaged and killed an isolated enemy. But this is what Braum can do. You can block out and engage like that. Just use your shield and block his engage. You know, another example is if you're up against like a Nami or something, when Nami uses a bubble or her ultimate, hold up your shield and block it all out. You will block all of it and Nami is not going to do anything. It's so powerful. Like it's insanely strong how you can just do that. You know, also when you're up against the Graves, just block out all of his attacks. It's just, he blocks out so many attacks. It's so good. It's so powerful. <clears throat> I'm not taking this farm because, of course, I want my team to get the farm. Uh, here I'm just kind of thinking, like, okay, what to do now? Uh, sorry, I, I just woke up. Okay, I just woke up. And, uh, yeah, I just woke up. That's, uh, <laughs> Uh, I was thinking about what to do. There's really nothing to do. So I'm just pushing the lane. Because no one else is pushing it, right? If no one else does, I will, whatever. Um, yeah, if you have nothing to do, you cannot do anything. But but yeah, yeah, I'm just kind of chilling in the mid lane here. You, you shouldn't force yourself to do something. Especially with our composition. Because if you look at our composition, we have a Veigar and we have a Graves and we have a Rangar. These are late game champions. We kind of outskill the enemy. So we don't have to force anything. So that's why I'm just kind of chilling. Uh, uh, Kha'Zix can never kill my Veigar. Never. Unless he gets help. But on his own, he's never going to be able to do anything against my Veigar. Like, at all. Nothing at all. Renekton, on the other hand, can. So I'm running away. <laughs> yeah, Renekton definitely can. So here, Redemption and Ult. Come on, Redemption, Ult. Ult, Redemption. There we go. Perfect. And boom, there it is. Redemption comes in clutch. It saves my ass. This is what I mean. This is the power of the redemption. This is the power of Braum, especially combined with the redemption. Even though we lost the fight, I hope you guys actually saw how good that was. So now I have a Warmock. So um, this means that I can just take fights and go out and then go back in and go out, go back in. That's what I can do now. So I'm going to be much more aggressive now. Because, like, Lulu Jinx is never going to one-shot me. The only real problem that I have would be the Graves and the Renekton. But Jinx is not a problem at all for me. Like, I just I just have to trade with her and then disengage. And then heal back up and then re-engage. That's all I have to do. <laughs> we can actually wait in this bush. I used my uh, um, the red helicopter. I don't know what it's called. I used the red helicopter. And look, I can just wait in this bush. If my team helps me, maybe... And we can just kill the Renekton here. Like, this was a free kill on the Renekton. But unfortunately, my team was not on the same page. It seems like only Lucian is in the same page. All I have to do, one basic attack, he gets stunned and he's dead. You see? Um, we could have killed him much easier. But yeah, I don't know what my team was doing. But this is what you can do as well. Use the Redemption. If, if the enemy cannot see that you're there, just, uh, uh, just kill one enemy. Because if you're stunned... You have so much CC, you can just kill an enemy. I'm not sure why no one is pushing mid lane with me here. Again, it's a bit weird to see that these higher ELO players don't really know what to do macro-wise. Because, like, all of them are focused on the bot lane, while we could just take the mid lane inhibitor. Like, they're just risking. Look at that. They're just risking a lot. Um, even though they're getting kills, which is good, we could have gotten way more out of it. Like, look at this Lulu. That's a free kill as well. We could have pushed the mid lane inhibitor right here. It's fine. Again, like, this is all fine. We could have just done more. Braum, please play with the team. Bro, how about you please play with me? Because I am making the right call here. Look at this, by the way. Oh my god. I just... One versus two of them, by the way. I'm probably gonna die here. Yep. So, like... Yeah, like I'm telling him, you listen to my call because I'm making the right call here. You know, I'm pushing the mid lane. Don't, don't rotate. Just push. Because if we push the mid lane, we're going to force the enemies to split up, which means that it's going to be even easier for our team to win the bot lane fight. And we're going to be pushing mid lane. It's just so much better to apply pressure at multiple sites 
especially while we're ahead in this game. There's no reason for us to try to force a fight at the bot lane, because the enemies can just go back in their turret and survive. So yeah. Um, wow, that's a lot. Oh, they stole it! Oops, the enemy stole the dragon. Our Vagar is insanely powerful, by the way, just so you know. Like, this Vagar has so many stacks now, you can clearly see from his damage. He even went for a, he went for a Rabadon's death cap first item. That's kind of funny. Maybe I should give that try, give that a try as well. Vagar now is actually insanely powerful. I should probably make a Vagar video. I have a Vagar video ready already, but I'm not sure if I should actually make it. I don't know. We'll see. We will see. Oh, by the way, guys, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like. It supports the channel a lot, and it's just a like. So if you want to do it, uh, let's see. So I should be ready here to engage with my ultimate if they come. It seems it seems like actually I'm choosing to tank the Baron, which is okay, but I should actually... What the hell was that? Let's just completely ignore what happened there and uh, not talk about it. So here, ult, come on. Boom! That's a free kill on the Gragas right there. Zeke's Convergence got activated as well. So I just have to get close to the enemies and slow them if I can. Boom. Let's take a look at this, applying my passive on as many enemies as I can. As you can see, Renekton stunned, Kha'Zix stunned, stunning everyone, guys. Here, boom, applied it on the Lulu too. I have to use my shield to block out the Jinx damage. As you can see, all of that insane Jinx damage just got blocked by me. If I didn't do that, she could have actually killed my Lucian. And here again, boom, easy, busy, kill. Braum is so powerful, guys. This champion, like, there's a reason why I always put him in the S or the S plus tier. Braum never leaves the S tier. Like, in all of my tier lists, if you look through them, I don't think there is a single tier list on my entire YouTube channel where Braum is below S tier. I genuinely, well, maybe like a few ones where he's on the top of the A tier, but never below anything like that. And that is why Braum is just insanely powerful, guys. So, thank you so much for watching. Let's take a look at how much damage everyone did and everything like that. I didn't even get MVP. I, I did 10,000 damage, like I almost did more damage than the Vegar, and the Vegar did that much damage as well. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next Wild Rift video. Bye bye.